Now here's something I've been wanting to take a look at internally for uh, quite a while. What we have here is one of these um, Philips remote phosphor uh, LED lights. Um, these are quite interesting because as you can see from the um, kind of little yellow section, the uh, the way they actually work with most um, with most white LEDs, let me grab one from up here. Um, so with most white LEDs, you know, here's a little, you know, kind of a characteristic. This is just an old Luxion um, star. Focus. There it goes. So you can see how the phosphor is basically inside the LED, you know, laid right on top of the die. So the way these actually work is they have a, a blue LED base, and then there's a color conversion phosphor, which absorbs some of that blue light and re-radiates it um, in kind of a yellow, orange, red, you know, range of the frequency spectrum. So the end result is you get something that seems a lot like white light. So whereas with these bulbs, same thing happens, but the, the phosphor is not right on top of the LED die, it's actually remote. So I've been quite curious because these have, there should be like a bunch of high power, you know, presumably blue LED dyes inside there. And then, you know, there'll be either some gap or something and then they, you know, it impinges on this yellow phosphor and the overall radiated light is effectively whitish. Actually, if you look at the emission spectra, there's a big peak at blue and then kind of a, so you have a big peak at blue and then there's kind of a hump. Anyways, I was at a homeless death spot and, um, these have gone down in price. They're normally about forty dollars. This one was uh, twenty-two bucks. Um, so you know, here's twenty-two dollars for science. So uh, I don't think I, I haven't actually even plugged it in as evidence by the fact that it's still in the box. Um, so you know, this is not the first LED bulb I've thrown down. It is definitely one of the ones with the most obnoxious packaging. Um, blah. You gotta like how they have to specify white light when lit because people would look at it and go, I don't want a yellow light bulb. Mm. The brilliance of the American public. Actually, I haven't even tried turning this on, so let's not be too hasty. Quite nice. It's definitely um like a warm yellow white light. It's definitely got a yellow tinge to it. Um, but I guess that's that's not too terrible. Um, the color change, you know, the the effective color may also change as the bulb warms up. But let me just put this back. This is just a little magnifying lamp I actually inherited from my dad. Oh, it's still plain old incandescent. So this is, it's quite, this is... So it looks like, um, so you can see that you have metal sections here and then this is, this is plastic. And then those, that's fairly thin. It also says caution suitable for use in dimmers. <laughs> as opposed, why would that be a caution? So as I understand it, Philips actually won a prize for these because they, um, you know, basically there was kind of like one of those X-Prize things for lamps, you know, basically. And, you know, basically the first person who could produce a certain number of lumens per watt. And this actually pulled off that prize. As you can see here, they... They claim 800 lumens, you know, made in China. The other things, and then down here it says 12.5 watts, 2700K, so it's quite um, cool. It's a very warm, and then 160 milliamps. Now the first thing I noticed is that um, there's a distinct gap here. So let's just see if I can't. This could be easier than I expected. So. Because I know definitely some of the other LED lights I've torn apart have been really quite the affair to take apart. So I think I'm 
betting that this comes out first. Because when this comes out, you can see that it seems to kind of be caught on the top edge. Let's see if I can't kind of shove. Yep. Oh, hello. So the first thing we can see down there is that it's very obvious that um, this is much nice, much more nicely constructed than a lot of the other LED lamps I've torn apart. It actually has connectors. So now that that's like that, I may be able to take this apart and then put it back together. So actually, so what we have here is it looks like, I'm guessing those are Luxion Rebels. Or another one of the similar, you know, basically the Luxion Rebel style package. But you can see there's um, three LEDs per side, so it's a total of nine LEDs. And then, um, let me use that fixture because it's more accessible. So, here's one extremely shitty fluorescent. That actually is the fluorescent that featured in my um, horrible fluorescent power factor video. So, yep, that's very blue. So you can actually see here, so um, that's just a piercing blue. So it looks like if you want a very bright blue light, one of these Philips dimmable bulbs would actually be a pretty good source of that because as you can see, that's very blue. And then if you put that on there, it turns whitish. So that's actually an excellent example of how these things work because you can see you've got you know, basically just vivid, you know, kind of a, a cyan. And then you put the phosphors on there and you get white light. You can actually kind of... And isn't that a cool demonstration? So presumably this is um, some very specially dope plastic because it's got the color conversion phosphors in there. So you have a white light and then you just kind of... That's ah, really cool. It's really kind of a vivid demonstration of how these work. Come here. Hey. So these should also be, um, you know, I'd actually, I wonder because blue LEDs are going to last a lot longer than um, white LEDs because the thing that the failure mode in white LEDs tends to be the phosphor degrading. I wonder if. Um, well, first of all, with this, you're going to have, I mean, the actual amount of phosphor available is going to be much larger, so I wonder if these last better. I think they actually specify 22.8 years on the factory. Um, 22.8 years means rated average life based on engineering, blah, 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 blah. Uh, three hours a day, seven days a week. So, you know, that's a, there's obviously not continuously on. And we just have shitty fluorescence. Anyway, so obviously you can see you have uh, LEDs and then you've got like a little white deflector. Right screwdriver. That was loose. Well, that's cool. So this is a um, machine threaded. So how is this held in? So you can see that this is like a dovetail fitting. So I'd almost think that this whole thing lifts up, but then the LEDs catch. So, wow, that's very loose. I mean, look at that. I was able to. Um, so just by applying torque on the barrel of this very small screwdriver, I was able to remove that screw. That's kind of worrisome. So, oh, yeah, so look at that. <laughs> oh, wow, it's a ceramic substrate. So here's one of the LED modules, and you can see you've got the three LEDs on a ceramic substrate. And then down here, this is a, like a, a sill pad thermal interface medium. They're all exactly the same way. Wow, this thing's very nicely made. So you can see that these kind of... Oops, they're all... They've actually got connectors on them. 
you know, this is very, this must, is presumably some sort of dope ceramic for, you know, thermal conductivity, but it's definitely, um, I mean, you could just, just listen to it, I mean, that's not metallic at all, it's all ceramic, in fact, um, oh. if I go like this, you can see it actually, it's, it's partially translucent, so there's no metal coating, you know, metal contents in there. So I wonder if these are presumably they're all in series. So you can look down in there and you see there's a little board, CC Tech Limited, and that is, that's plastic. So here are those sill pads which are kind of adhered off. So presumably, like most of these, I would imagine internally it's potted. Let's see if I can't. So that's interesting because that means that these screws are going to be what's produced, providing the clamping force. So I think they'd need to be fairly tight. Because this is um, some sort of metal. You can see here's the the base and you've got, so it's held on with crimps and then it looks like there's a little solder dot for connectivity. Right. And then this down here is plastic. You can see looking down in there it's definitely been potted. The real question is, also you can start seeing some, like there's a big inductor. So a lot of the, one of the commonalities I've seen between all of the um, LED bulbs I've taken apart is they all tend to have a PC board potted in like a compliant potting compound, which this is. And then they slide it into the metallic housing. So how is this? I can't see any retaining mechanism, so I'm inclined to believe that this is presumably just a really snug friction fit. I suppose it's possible that this board got soldered in after the fact and there's some retention stuff down there. Actually, let me see if I can't pull that board out one second. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be another one of those sagas of the trying to get into the obnoxious equipment like the previous bulb where it was like 20 minutes with a saw. On the other hand, it does appear to be moving slightly. So, it's sort of a part. Um, as you might be able to tell that this thing seems to kind of be wiggling. Though I'm starting to think that this is just like a bottom cap and it's potted into the element, the uh, metal enclosure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so we can see that it looks like they stick the electronics in there and then dump potting compound all over it. So this is like the typical um, squishy potting compound. Anyway, so this is going to be another one of those peel it out affairs, I think. Just because apparently they hate standards, line is red and neutral is black, which is you know, accurate to what I prefer, you know, the, the red hot black ground color code that, you know, kind of most compact electronics use, but it directly contravenes, you know, the standard wiring, which is white is neutral and black is hot, um, which is kind of the whatever. Don't even get me started on electrical codes. Um, so we can also start seeing, you know, hey, look, there's some components, and from the look of it, They've been glued down, which means I would assume that this has been wave soldered. I 
Oh, there's a fusible resistor from the look of it. You don't see that matte finish on resistors that often. That was quite successful. So here is the ballast. It's a little, so let me kind of peel the rest of the goo off. One thing I do notice is that I don't, I mean, obviously there's some sort of, that looks like the labeling you see on a transformer in this area. Um, you've got a big electrolytic here, and there's this sheet of Captain tape, which I don't really understand because it looks like there's a um, potting compound under it. So I don't know what the point was. Because, yeah, look, there's just, it's just total lots of potting compound down here, too. Anyways, let's keep peeling. That's interesting. So there we go. We can start to. What we see right there is an isolation slot in the board. So I'm betting there's another capacitor over here somewhere. Yep. Well, that's interesting. Look at that. We have flying leads coming out of the transformer. Pretty sure that is a little bridge rectifier. Yep. So one thing you can see is that if you look closely, you can see all these little sections of glue. So I bet this board was wave soldered because what they do is they they place all the or they they place the glue and then they place the components into the glue that holds them down, and then it runs through a wave solder machine. And the you know it's surface mount, but it picks up all the solder it needs from the wave soldering process, and then the epoxy or the whatever the bonding compound is holds the parts in place so they don't move around. It's kind of a way of doing mix through hole wave soldering. Um, the downside of that particular practice is the components have to be a certain minimum size. Though some of these look like they're 0805, so I guess they're. That's not bad. Oh, hey, look, there's a little capacitor down there. And then I would assume that this big thing in the. Uh, over here, this is presumably the main kind of the reservoir cap. And I'd guess that the reason it's in the heat shrink is because if this fails, it will vent out the top. And the heat shrink basically ensures that there's a, a venting path out to the atmosphere because this poked out of the end of the potting. So in other words, it won't like build pressure up internally and then kind of explode. You know, which seems like what you'd kind of expect to get a lawsuit. So it seems like they're kind of... Uh, fairly relaxed about their construction. I mean, you can see they're just folding the capacitors over and leaving them dangling. I guess they're kind of relying on the fact that the um, the potting compound holds everything in place, which I don't really see as being a problem. I mean, it does hold everything in place, unless I come along. <laughs> I wonder if they vacuum the potting compound in, because it seems to fill very densely. And I don't see any gaps in here, and I would think if this was like a viscous potting compound, it wouldn't flow into all the little tiny gaps as effectively as it did unless they they use like pressure to force it in there. So what we have here, according to the label on the board, is a Prince dimmable LED driver version 1.4. Or 14, I'm not actually totally certain. So you can see the labeling. I'm pretty sure that says Prince. 
date code is 7-7-2011. So, more than a year old. So this is kind of interesting. Look at this cap, like this shower cap thing they put on this capacitor. Presumably for, um, in case it vents, I would guess. So you can see anyway, so you've got, this looks like an inductor. These are all EP. I don't know what it is, and this is an EP07. So one of the things you can see is obviously um, the secondary for this uh, transformer comes out the top, and that's what these two flying leads are. So, you know, here's your secondary, and that bridges across the isolation gap. And then the only thing that's actually soldered across this groove is the, um, basically the, this little capacitor here, which is just for keeping common mode noise down. Um, so they're using uh, primary side feedback, which is what a lot of these drivers seem to be doing these days. Um, obviously, let's see. Transformer footprint, you have um, two, three, four. So I think they're probably, you know, from the two big switching feds, I bet they're driving this in half-wave bridge. Um, bridge rectifier, um, switching controller, I can't see a name on. Not much to it, you can see there's a couple big ceramics. Um, fair number of passives. Here's some big um, large power resistors, presumably for uh, inrush current limiting. These are, well they're um, 183, so that's um, 18K. Not too sure what those would be for actually. Over here we have um, 1503, so that's 150K. 701. Got lots of, you know, four, five, six discrete diodes. Over here you've just got, um, just the output has just single diode, so it's only half wave rectification, you know, a capacitor, a ceramic cap, and a little electrolytic across it. And then um, there's a resistor in 2003, 200K. I wonder what that's for. That might be just a bleed down resistor, but it seems too large for that. And then here's your output. So the circuit's fairly simple. I mean, it's got a lot of passives. This must be like a. No, it's only, I think it's. It looks like it might be a four layer board, but I'd best bet it's only two layer. And here's your main electrolytic. Um, this box is probably a fuse. You see that packaging fairly common. Um, input filtering, um, you know, inductor, capacitor, inductor, so that's an LCL. All these inductors are kind of interesting. They're um, barrel inductors. I didn't damage the winding on any of them by stabbing it with my tweezers while trying to get all the potting compound off. This might be like a resonant converter as well because you've got this big inductor there. So actually that looks to have... Uh, I don't know, it's only got three leads, I think. Oh, no, maybe it has four. No, it's just a leg, never mind. Not a pin. Kind of potting compound stuck under everything. So anyways, this one look, I mean obviously it's, it's this is going to be isolated unlike one of the other ones I looked at. Um, and then you have, here are your three LEDs. So I'm pretty sure that, because this isn't, you know, damaged to the point where it's unusable. So I can just put, you know, some leads on here and probably still use it. I'm not sure what metal this is. It feels it's probably like pot metal. Because I mean it's very brittle and let's face it, you know how much heat thinking you're gonna get from this little section here? Basically squat. It ain't gonna do dick. So um yeah, so there you go. It's 
you know, there's a, a Phillips remote phosphor LED bulb, which uses nine blue little compact profile LEDs. Ah, soldering onto lead free. Such a pain in the ass. Alright, well, it's not the safest way to test it, but. Huh! Ah, I'm seeing spots. So there you go. Now we have a remote, remote phosphor light. <laughs> It's a cool, it's a pretty cool example of the technology. I mean, you can kind of see how the color conversion phosphor is not actually even coupled very closely to the um, actual illumination mechanism, but well, there you go. So it looks like this just kind of plops on there. I'll probably, I'll leave it off. So now I just need to figure out what I want to do with this. It's very bright. Um, I guess I could, it would be like a funky hanging lamp. <laughs> Should probably do something about this board kind of wobbling around in the middle. But anyways, cool, there you go. So there's how a Philips remote phosphor uh, LED bulb works. So of course the obvious alludes me, I have this nice little insert that fits perfectly in here and holds the board in the proper position and everything so why am I not using it because apparently I'm stupid is why so this sits in there like that which means that that's positive so I just need to open up these holes a little bit and then that pulls down like that it's in place nicely. That has to line up properly, but that's not too hard. And then, oops, that should slide further in, I think. No, oh, that's it. Then you just have to plug the plugs in. Make sure I didn't reverse anything. Still works. Cool. So I may hot glue that in place. But, um, there we are. <laughs>